Okay, I'm continuing my series on Python for physics people. Uh, and we're in the second half of the introductory semester. And, and this is a, I'm making a series of videos. The link to the whole playlist will be down below. I like to point down here because that's where down below is. Uh, and the idea is to kind of give ideas and activities that an, a physics educator could use in their course. Now, maybe you're an actual physics student, and that's cool too, because I also am a physics student in many ways. Uh, so I did the first semester, and I have a whole bunch of stuff there. I started in the second semester. We looked at uh, displaying the electric field, uh, calculating the electric field due to a point charge, calculating the electric field due to a dipole, calculating the electric field due to a charged rod. That was kind of cool uh, by breaking it into a finite number of pieces. But now I want to do the electric potential. So uh, first of all, let's look at the electric field. This is a reminder. So if I have a point charge right here, Q, located at some vector R, Q, and I have an observation location where I want to find the electric field vector located by R, O, then I can find the vector from the charge to that location, R. Now, if, if that charge is at the origin, then, then that's just R observation location is R. Okay, but I just want to try to be formal here. So then I can find the the magnet the, the vector value of the electric field as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over the magnitude of R squared times R hat. And so this is really important because it gives you the vector calculation for the electric field. Now we define electric potential as negative the path integral of E dot dr uh, from some point to some other point. Uh, and, you know, I, you, we can derive the electric potential due to a point charge using this, using the magnitude of this and integrating. And, and I'll, if I remember, I'll put a link to that derivation down below. Uh, but what I want to do is to do this exactly. So I want to go from one point to another and find the change in potential. Uh, I can calculate the electric field at each location. I can calculate the dr vector. And then I'm going to show you that in just a second, but I'll do this. Now, here's what I do want to compare it to. This is the equation you see for the electric potential for point charge with respect to infinity, right? This is the electric potential with respect to infinity for point charge. Uh, so the path integral has an initial and final point. So this really doesn't make sense. We do this all the time because uh, we're kind of lazy. But I don't want to talk about potential. I want to instead focus on how you do this numerically. Because I'm assuming you know some physics. And if you don't, then maybe... I don't know, maybe you'll learn something from this. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start off with a charge. I'm not going to draw it in Python. I'm just going to, it's going to be there. It's going to be at the origin. It's going to be a charge Q. And then I'm going to start way over here, some far distance away. And that'll be my RO vector, which is this whole vector. RO is that whole vector. And then I'm going to have a dr vector. And so dr, in this case, will be the vector negative dx, 0, 0. I'm going to move in the x direction, some small piece. Some, so I'm going to move from here to there, and that's dr. And so if I know E and I know dr, I can assume that E is constant over that short step, in which case the change of potential for that little step, I'll call dv, would just be negative E dot dr. And then I'll be right here. And I'll move my new, R my new R observation location to here. And then I'll do it again, and I'll go right there. And I'll do it again, and again, and again. And then the total change of potential from here to some R final, I'll call this R final. I don't want to go all the way here, because it'll, it'll get, that's not, in fact, I'll just keep that to the scalar. That's an R final distance. That's an F. Yeah. Uh, the total V is, is going to be uh, the sum of all the dVs. So I'm going to start off with v is equal to 0, calculate dv going from here to there, uh, and then add it to that and do it again and again and again. And that's all I'm going to do. Uh, now, this is starting from infinity. I can't start from infinity. So I'm going to start from something uh, just really big. Okay, so let's pick some values. So first, I'm going to use q equals 9. Uh, I'm going to, no, I'm going to use that. q equals uh, 1 nanocoulomb, 1 times 10 to the negative 9th. Coulombs. Uh, let's go to R final. I don't know why I picked this. Let's say 0 0.5. That's weird. That's what I put here. Uh, let's put 0 
0 0.05, so 5 centimeters. And let's pick a dx, my step size, of 0 0.01. And if we need to change those, we can. Okay, I think we're ready to do this. So let's jump over here to Python and code this up and see what happens. Okay, so here we are, Python. I'm using Trinket Close Script. It's now called Web V Python. They changed the name, just so you know. Uh, so let's just put in my constants here. So I'm going to say k, that's my 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, 9 times 10 to the ninth. Um, make it a little bit bigger. I need my q is 1 times 10 to the negative ninth. Uh, I need r final is going to be equal to 0 0.05. Uh, now I need my, uh, I guess I should say rq. I'm going to put that in there. rq is going to be the vector 0, 0, 0. rq is where is my charge. And I'm doing this because if I want to change it and do it differently, I can. I, it's easy to do, right? It changes value. Uh, next, I need my, r, my observation location, so ro equals, I'm going to start this at, a distance of 20 meters away. And I don't know why I picked that, but that's pretty much infinity, right? 20 meters is an infinite distance away. I mean, think about how small the electric field would be back there. And we can change it around and see what happens. Uh, dr is going to be equal to uh, vector, uh, let's see, negative 0 0.0100. 0 0. So I'm, I'm moving uh, one centimeter at a time. Okay, uh, now what else do I need? I'm going to make a graph. Uh, oh, I need this, v equals zero. Actually, let's just plot it and then we'll make a graph uh, afterwards. Um, so I have ro, I have rq, I have dr. Okay, I think I'm doing good. Okay, so now what I want to do is keep moving. So I'm going to make a loop. And I'm going to say while the magnitude of ro is greater than rf. So as long as that's true, now be very careful with these greater than or equal signs. It's possible if you put that backwards, you would never get there. Or if you mess up your dr, you would never get there. And it would just have an infinite loop. And I've done that many times. And you feel dumb, but it does happen. Okay. Um, I wish they had like a breakup. They do have a reset. I'm not sure if that works or not. Okay. Uh, but I don't want to find out. I don't want to find out if it works. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do in this loop is to calculate the vector r. And this is just going to be r o minus r q. Now, in this case, r o is r. So, but now if I move that r q, it'll make a difference. Now I can calculate the electric field at that location. So I'm just going to use, and there's a previous video on how to do this. k times q times norm r, right? Norm r is a unit vector in the direction of r. I need that or I don't get a vector divided by the magnitude of r squared. Now I want to calculate the change of potential across that tiny little dr step. So I'm going to say dv equals the dot product. Dot product is built into Glowscript script vpython. Uh, web vpython. I'm sorry, web vpython. Uh, so which is really nice. I can just call this function, put in two vectors, and it returns the scalar dot product. So it's going to be e, e dot dr. So it's going to be e dr, and this should be negative, right? It's negative e dot dr. The, the change of potential has that negative sign in there because it's actually due to the work. And then when you move to the other side of the equation, it becomes negative. Okay, what next? Now I can just add that V equals V plus DV. Uh, now I need to move my point charge. So I'm going to say RO, my observation location equals RO plus dr. Now it's plus dr because dr has a negative x direction. So that's fine. Okay, so don't think, oh, I'm going the wrong way. No, you're going the right way. And I think that's it. And then let's just say print uh, v equals v volts. Now let's also just compare uh, the theoretical version. Okay, we're at rf. So let's say uh, vc equals k times q divided by rf. K, Q, yeah, that's it. And let's print that. Print uh, VC for the calculated or theoretical. VC volts. Okay, I should save that. Oh, let's just run it. Okay, now I'm going to save it. Uh, numerical um, potential, electric potential. Potential save. Okay, so
So now as I run that, you'll notice that I, my answer is wrong, okay? And it's wrong because if you think about this, as I get closer and closer, that assumption that the electric field's constant is no longer true. If I go one centimeter as I get really close, that's not a good assumption. So we can fix this. We can fix this number one by just not going as close. If I put RF equals something really big like five, 0.5, that's really good, right? 17.3 volts versus 18 volts. Now I can even fix that even more. There's two things I can change. I can change the step size. Uh, let's just make the step size a little bit smaller. Let's make it zero five, half as big. And it's even better. Let's make it just, let's go all the way. It's running fast. So that's, that's pretty good, okay? Uh, the other thing I can change is to start further away. If I start too close, I'm missing some of that change in potential from with, the, with respect to infinity. So let's just try this change in uh, the initial to 30. And you see it gets even closer, okay? So there's a lot of things we can change, but <clears throat> overall this is, uh, I'm pretty happy with the way it is right now. Uh, I want to now make a plot of the potential as a function of R uh, for both of these values. So let's do that. So let's go up here and add a graph. Uh, G1 equals graph. Uh, X title equals R. I'll, just leave, I'll leave off the units. Y title equals V uh, width equals 450 height equals 200 uh, and then I have two two graphs so I'm going to have FV for the the potential It'll be G curve color equals color dot blue and label equals numerical and then FC equals G curve color equals color dot red label equals um, analytical let's call it that okay so now down here I need to plot those values so right here I'm I'm as I'm moving along I'm plot I'm I'm changing V anyway so I can just plot V so let's just do this for F V dot plot uh, the magnitude of R I can't plot R right because and technically this should be RO uh, I'm not sure if it should be R or R. I'm gonna leave it as R. Uh, and then V. I can't plot the R because that's a vector. I'm just gonna run it like this and let's just see if that one curve works. Okay, so that's ex that's what we'd expect. Okay, now I can do the other one. For the other one, I need to calculate that in each line up here. So let's do uh, this. Let's just copy, let's just cut this. Control X. Paste it now, and this is not going to be R F. It's going to be mag R. And now let's plot that one. Uh, F C dot plot mag R B C. And there you go. That's pretty good, right? They're pretty much on top of each other, so I'm pretty happy with that. And you can see that that it is a pretty good value. Um, and, and, and this is a little bit different because that plotted it and then I moved it, right? So there, it's actually one step short, but I don't think it matters too much. Uh, so there you go. Now, why would you do this, right? Because now, and I'll do this in the next problem, we can do really interesting things. You can integrate from infinity to R along the x-axis is pretty easy. What if you have a non-straight path? What if you have like a curved path and you want to calculate the change of potential? It should only depend on the endpoints, but does it? And how to how do, do that? So I will do that in the next one. You can also use this for some non-trivial uh, uh, electric field distri charge distribution that could be fun like that too. So, okay. So I'll try to remember the things I told you I'd put down below and they'll be down there. And then I will talk to you later. That's the end.